Welcome to the CORF Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will discuss how CORF uses specifications, how to track and change specifications, and the difference between specifications and inputs. Let's consider a relatively simple system consisting of a control valve connected by two pipes. In the status bar, you will notice that CORF displays the current number of specifications provided versus the number that are required. In addition, you can display the current specifications on the flow diagram by clicking on the Specs toolbar button. With the current specifications, CORF will calculate the flow rate through the system using the specified feed and product pressures, as well as the control valve size. Alternatively, you can calculate the control valve pressure drop, and thus valve size, by specifying the flow rate instead of the valve CV. To do this, double-click on the control valve. Then, select the Size tab and delete the valve CV. Click OK to confirm the changes. Notice that the number of specifications provided in the status bar has reduced by 1 and is no longer equal to the number that are required. Next, double-click on the pipe attached to the control valve inlet. Then, select the Flows tab and enter the required mass flow rate. In this example, we will use 100,000 kilograms per hour. Click OK to confirm the change. The status bar now shows that the number of specifications provided is the same as what is required. Click on Hydraulics to rerun the simulation and calculate the valve CV. Next, click the Results button on the toolbar, select the Equipment tab, select Valve CV, and then click OK to display the results on the flow diagram. CORF is extremely flexible in what you can specify, allowing you to simulate almost any fluid flow problem. The only requirements are that the number of specifications equals the number of unknowns, and that the specifications are independent. In the current example, you can change the specifications to calculate the flow rate, feed pressure, control valve inlet pressure, valve DP, valve size, valve outlet pressure, or product pressure, depending on the goal of your simulation. Next, let's discuss the difference between specifications and input. Open the control valve dialog by double-clicking on it. You will notice that the pressure drop, inlet pressure, and outlet pressure are labeled as specifications. If you do not provide them, CORF will calculate them based on the other specifications when the simulation is run. In general, specifications will be pressures, pressure differentials, flows, or equipment details that will impact pressure drop across the equipment, such as the control valve CV, or ORFIS bore diameter. Below the pressures, the control valve type and elevation are labeled as input. If you do not provide them, CORF will use a default value, such as zero for elevation, or calculate them from other inputs. Other examples of inputs include pipe lengths and diameters, physical properties, fluid levels, and pump or compressor efficiency. Lastly, a few general rules for specifications. First, CORF internally performs a mass balance around each piece of equipment. As a result, you cannot specify the flow for more than one pipe in series or for all the pipes entering and leaving the system. Otherwise, these specifications will not be independent. Second, Pressure drop specifications are always based on the drawing inlet and outlet, not the actual flow inlet and outlet. 
For example, if an exchanger has a specified DP of 10 PSI and the flow is negative, the exchanger will act as a pump. If a negative flow is required, change the DP spec to negative 10 or specify a rating DP, which is pressure drop in the flow direction. Finally, at least one pressure must be specified, as Cork needs a reference point to calculate all the other pressures from. Congratulations! You now understand how CORF uses specifications to solve almost any fluid flow problem.